The perfect explanation of circular references in Creole Parametric actually comes from the brilliant TV show Futurama. Season 4, Episode 1 is called All's Well That Roswell. It's a great episode. I highly recommend that you watch it before watching the rest of this video because there are spoilers in this video for the episode. In the description section, I also indicate what time you can jump to if you don't want to hear spoilers from this episode. So, we'll pause right here, go check it out, Season 4, Episode 1 of Futurama, All's Well That Roswell, and come back and then watch the rest of this video. Alright, so now that you're back, I'm assuming that you watched the video, so we saw that Philip Fry ended up meeting his grandfather Enos, and he got really paranoid about the grandfather paradox, going back in time and accidentally killing your grandfather. And he also met his grandfather, Enos's fiance, his grandmother, Mildred. Well, he accidentally ended up killing his grandfather and he was worried about erasing himself out of existence. And he went to comfort his grandmother. One thing led to another and, well, shenanigans. So Fry ended up becoming his father's father. He was both the father and son of his father as a result of time travel. Well, circular references are kind of the same thing in the Creole parametric world. You have one feature or component that is both the father and child of another feature or component. So let's jump into Creole parametric. Let's take a look at how you can accidentally create a circular reference. And again, I want to stress circular references are bad. You don't want them in your assemblies. So here's how you can accidentally end up with one. I have my assembly open and I decide that I want to create a new subassembly. So I will click the create button. I'm going to choose subassembly is what I want to build. I'm not going to bother changing the name. I'm going to use my standard start assembly and I'm just going to locate it using the default constraint. And so when I hit the check mark, I have my new assembly in the model and to create features or components in it, I'm going to activate it. So far, so good, nothing bad yet. And designing it in context is a very common part in assembly design technique. So this in and of itself so far isn't bad. Now I'm going to show you a bad practice and I've actually seen users do this. So I need some reference geometry in this subassembly that I have active. I should create a skeleton, but I've seen users just create copy geometry features in the assembly at the top level, not in a skeleton. So again, not a good practice. Uh, but Anyhow, for making my geometry in my part, I'm going to select some surfaces from this blue part. And I'm just picking them. Give me a second. All right, so I have all the references I, that I want. Normally at this point I would change the name, but for the sake of this demo, I'm not going to rename it. Let's hit the check mark and expand the assembly in the model tree. So there you see the copy geometry right at the top level of the assembly, not a good practice. So with my assembly still active, let's create the part that we want in the subassembly. So I'll click the create command again, and let's choose part. And I'm not gonna bother changing the name. I'm just gonna use my standard template. And I'm just gonna locate it using the default constraint hit the check mark, and now I have my new part in the model, and let's activate it. Actually, let's open up the assembly in its own separate window, just so that there's less clutter on the screen. So in my assembly, I have my part created, I have a copy geometry feature, and I will activate the part and create a copy geometry feature in here. And I'm going to use pick from list 
to make sure I get the quilt rather than having to pick all those individual surfaces. And again, normally I would rename it, but I'm just going to hit the check mark. So now I have my part created. Let's open it in its own separate window. Again, if you're sitting there wondering, hey, why the heck am I creating a copy geometry in the assembly and then creating a copy geometry in the part? There's a method to my madness because I'm. you have to work hard to create circular references, and that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. For making the geometry in here, let's create a sketch, and I'm just going to sketch on the surface here, hit the sketch button, and I'm going to use project, and then loop, just to grab the outside edges. There we go. Accept, close. So now I have a sketch, let's hit the check mark, and I'm going to, oops, not sketch, I meant to hit the extrude button, and let's just extrude this to a value of one. I'm just making geometry in here so I can force myself to have a circular reference. And this needs some mounting holes, so I'm going to use flexible modeling, select a seed surface, use the pattern recognition tool, hit the check mark. And so now I can create an axis through one of the surfaces that got picked up in the pattern. And with the axis still selected, I will create a hole. Hold down the control key to select the starting surface. And I'm just going to use a depth of through all. And then with the hole selected, I'm going to create a pattern. Oops, I forgot to pattern the axis. Pattern the axis, pattern the hole. And let's hide the copy geometry feature. So now I have a part. Let's hop back over to the transmission assembly. So not great uh, design practices with creating the copy geometry at the top level of the assembly, but I don't have any problems so far. If I hit the regeneration button, Hey, automatic regeneration has been completed. Some other error about some relation in my model, but okay. So here's the extra step that people take that ends up getting them an external reference. They say, hey, wait, this assembly that I created, I created that using the default constraint. I actually have geometry now. Let's go and put in real constraints. So we'll edit definition of the assembly. And if I go to the placement tab, hey, there's the default constraint. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to delete it. And then for my constraints, uh, let's line up this hole and this hole over here. And then this hole and this hole over here. And then make this surface and this surface coincident. And you're like, great, I'm fully constrained. I have real constraints now. And I hit the check mark. And when I regenerate, hey, now we have a warning. Three circular references were found. If we go to the reference viewer on the paths tab, you'll see that, hey, there are three circular references. It starts numbering with zero. So it's actually, you know, the total number is one more than the highest number in this list. So again, the reason that I have a circular reference is that the geometry in this part was based off of a copy geometry feature and then that geometry that results is used to assemble it and the location of the component defines the location of the copy geometry feature and if i go to my working directory hey there we see that we have a crc file created you can open this up in whatever text editor you want, notepad, wordpad, notepad plus plus or whatever. Uh, so here you see we have the information about why we have a circular reference. So the way that this can be avoided, if you're going to design in context, don't take the extra step of adding real, and I'm saying real with air quotes, real constraints. Just leave it with the default constraint. All right, I'm gonna hit the undo button to get rid of that circular reference. If I regenerate, hey, I'm not getting an error this time. 
And if I edit definition of the component, you'll see I'm back to using default. And I want to show you another similar way in which I've seen people get this circular reference. So I'm opening up the assembly back in its own separate window. And uh, the way that I saw a user get this again was with this copy geometry feature created at the top level of the assembly. And then they said, hey, you know what? Instead of using the default constraint for the first component in the assembly, which you can probably use at least 98% of the time, if not more, they went back and used edit definition again to get rid of that default constraint. And let me just pull it away here so it's easier to select my references. And yeah, hey, let's line up a couple of holes. Doesn't matter which holes I use, but I'm just selecting two to eliminate rotation. And we do our constraint for the flat planar surfaces. Right now it's giving me a distance constraint. By the way, you can double click on the distance note in the screen if you want to change it to what you actually want to use. Change that back to coincident and I hit the check mark. And when we regenerate, hey, two circular references are found. You're like, how the heck do I have a circular reference with only one component in my assembly? This is how. So again, you can go to the reference viewer and the paths tab. You'll see your circular references in here. And what's interesting is I go and click on it, it says, whoa, this reference itself is just broken. And here's circular path number one. It's just a real tricky situation uh, what you have here. So please avoid this.